Hi triathletes! Welcome back to another session with Triathlon Tessa. Today we'll be taking a look at bike handling skills, so how you handle your water bottles, how you can use your clipping pedals, as well as your aero bars and some general bike handling skills that you need for your first race. So stay tuned as I share them with you guys, as well as give some feedback regarding the virtual triathlon that was held on 25 and 26 April 2020. Okay guys, before we dig into the bike handling skills, let me first give you an update about the virtual triathlon that was held on 25 and 26 April 2020. I did not make a separate video about this as there was only one participant. So thank you very much Peter Ellison for participating in the sprint non-swim triathlon. Just to give you guys some feedback, he did the 20 km bike section in 49 minutes and 22 seconds which would be an average of 24.3 kilometers. And he also ran the five kilometer in 26 minutes and 17 seconds. That will give you a five minute and 16 seconds average per kilometer. So thank you so much, Peter. I really appreciate it. I think with the virtual triathlon races that Ironman is doing currently, most people are participating there. So I'll also encourage you guys to go and participate in the virtual races that Ironman is showcasing. So for those of you living in the Northern Hemisphere, you would be in your race season right now. It will be a great time to test your fitness levels. For us in the Southern Hemisphere, we're nearing winter, so most of our trainings would be indoor. And it's a great opportunity to participate in the virtual races of Ironman. So let's start off with today's session. I'll be dividing today's session in four categories. The first one will be some tips on how to handle your water bottles and the second one will be on how you can use your clipless pedals with ease and comfort and then the third one will look at some aero tips and then the last one just some general bike handling skills. The most important thing that you can learn while riding your bike is how to take one hand off your handlebar with confidence as you'll need that when you need to take out the water bottle, when you need to go down in your tri bars as well as how to grab some nutrition from a volunteer when out on a race. So let's start with the first one, the handling of your water bottles. Before we do that, an important thing that you need to take note of is the type of bottle cage that you have on your bike. There are two types of main bottle cages out there. The first one, if you put in your water bottle, you would be able to access your water bottle from the side as well. And then when you look at the other one, you'll see the water bottle would only be able to go out on the top. So for this, make sure that you have the correct water bottle cage as that will make your life a little bit more easier. Because if you have a bottle cage that functions as a vice grip, you would struggle to get your water bottle out. So I would suggest rather instead of using the one that your water bottle can only come up on the top, I would suggest rather get yourself one where your water bottle can come out on the side. As when you put this one on your down tube, you can fetch it from the side and it's much easier taking it out. Now after you've bought your water bottle cages, there are three different places that you can place your water bottle cages. First one will be on the down tube of your bike, the second one will be at the back of your seat post and the third one would be between your tri bars. Now the one for your tri bars would have different mountings, but the two that I'm going to focus on today would be the one on your down tube and the one behind your back. Now for me personally, the one behind your back would function much more easier than the one on your down tube. As the one on your down tube, you'll have to go down, then look where your water bottle is and then take it out. Whereas if it's at the back, you can just put your hand to the back and take out your water bottle. Now, how can you get used to taking out your water bottle? I would suggest either sit on an indoor trainer or either put yourself next to a table or something that you can hold onto while practicing this. So first off, I suggest if you're down on your handlebars, just take off one hand of your handlebar. So when you're used to taking one hand off the handlebar and you build some confidence, then you'd be able to go down and then just touch your water bottle. And then once you're comfortable with that, you can take out your water bottle and then put it back. So first practice this while you're stationary as this will build some confidence. If you have a water bottle at the back of your seat, the same thing would apply. First get used to just taking one hand off your handlebar. Once you're confident taking one hand off, 
you can just move it to the back so just take it from the front move it to the back and then once you're comfortable with that you can just take out the water bottle when your water bottle is at the back you can just feel where your butt is and then just stick the water bottle back into its place so for me personally it's much easier using the water bottle holder at the back of your seat instead of having to use the one on your down tube so i hope that these tips have helped you guys to get some confidence before you go outside and then the same applies once you've built confidence inside now you can go and cycle outside and practice these exact same skills outside in those order so first take off one hand off your handles and then the second one just go and touch wherever your water bottle is down on your down tube or at the back of your butt and then you can take it out the next step and then practice putting it back i would suggest caution here first trying out on a straight piece of road and not going that fast until you've built some confidence and then you can try and use those skills when you're cornering or on a terrain where it's not as straight and as flat so let's move on to the second part the second part would be getting used to your clip in pedals now for that there's different types of pedals out there so make sure that you find the ones that you are most comfortable with you can either have some mountain bike cleats on your road bike or you can have road bike specific cleats there's usually no problem fitting mountain bike cleats onto your road bike shoes as well some people prefer them as they are a little bit smaller and it's much easier to run with them in transition okay so let's move on how do you practice your clip in pedals now for that i would suggest first starting indoors before you move outdoors so when you're clipped in and holding on to a table or something or you're on your indoor trainer and then once your feet are clipped in the only thing you need to do is just move the back of your heel to the outside and then you'll be able to clip out your feet so once you've mastered this i would suggest going outside on a straight piece of road and then while you are posting practice the exact same thing as then you'll have time to think about how you should clip out your pedal so once again while you're coasting and your bike are moving just clip out your one feet put it to the side and clip it in do the same with the other one until you are comfortable most accidents happen because people get to a complete halt and then they go into some kind of panic and then they forget how to clip out their feet it has happened to me as well in the beginning i think i fall down like two or three times when the bike came to a complete halt and then in some panic i forgot how to clip out my feet so i suggest practice it indoors before going outdoors now let's look at the next one when you have a tri bike or you have a road bike with some tri bars on them you need to get comfortable down in your aero position as that is where you'll save some time as you would eliminate most of the drag when you're cycling outside once again i would suggest that you try this indoors most preferably on an indoor trainer where your bike is stationary so how do you get used to your TT bars? You'll just have to go down in your aero position as it's a new position that you need to learn how to stay in. So I suggest when riding indoors, go down in your aero bars for one minute, then come up for one minute, and then every session or every second session, move on to another minute until you can ride in your aero bars for 15 minutes. Core strength is very important when riding in your aero bars as your stomach needs to be tight when you are down in your aero position most people would also say that their shoulders get tense so i'd also suggest that you strengthen your shoulders and your core if you want to stay down in your aero position for a long period of time so practice going down in your aero bars and then staying in your aero bars as long as possible the most important part when you're down in your aero bars is that your shoulders should be relaxed and your bike setup should also be correct for your specific position that would be as comfortable as possible for as long as possible you can go and check out my video on how to do a bike setup at home if you're not sure if you have the correct setup of your tri bars once you are able to ride comfortably indoors for five or ten minutes i suggest that you can go outside now it's much different riding outside than riding inside once again you need to build confidence taking one hand off one of your handlebars because going down in your aero bars would have you see lift one hand from your handlebar take that and put it in your aero bar and then take the other hand and put it in your aero bar as well so the most important thing that you need to learn is how to take one hand off a handlebar with confidence so practice this before you go down in your aero bar once again practice this on a straight piece of road without any hills and then going very slowly 
once you've mastered it, you can build up confidence and going a little bit faster. If you're scared that you might fall down, you're more than welcome to practice this when riding out in your local park or your track where there's grass that if you fall down, you would have a softer landing. Now lastly, let's look at some bike handling skills that would be handy when you ride out on your ride or when you're in a race. Most races would have a U-turn at the turnaround point of the bike section. Now for that, you need to learn how to turn around in a two-lane section of road. Now for that, you can practice that outdoors, either on the grass or you can set up your own turning point. When practicing your turnaround, the most important thing is to be in the correct gear. Now to turn around swiftly and also keep your momentum, I would suggest that you be in a very light gear. So once you're done with the turnaround, you're in the correct gear for putting down some power and building up speed again. So you can practice this by putting something in the middle of the road where it's safe, like a parking area or something, and start practicing your turnarounds there. The best way would be to put two of them and then cycle in an eight around them. And then as you get comfortable, move them closer together and keep on riding until you build confidence. Then the second thing you need to learn is how to do a 90 degree turn. As most of the races would have a turnaround off the highway or a turnaround on the highway, and for that you need to be able to turn 90 degrees. Now the easiest way to explain this is that you should put your body weight towards the corner that you are turning. Now for that you need the leg from the side that you're turning to to be straight and the other one to be bent. So say for instance you're turning to the right, you need to have your right leg straight and leaning into the right hand side while doing the cornering. Once again, before you go into the turn, you should select the correct gear. So for that, I also suggest going into a lighter gear. So once you've done with the cornering, you can just speed up again and then just go down to a lower gear afterwards. Now the next skill that you need would be how to ride hills. Now for that, the best thing is to go and practice some hills as most of us have weaknesses when riding hills. So go and try to ride a hill every week or every second week to build some confidence as also some leg strength and also get used to the gearing ratios of your bike. So when you climb a hill, the first thing I would suggest is before you start climbing the hill, selecting a gear where your cadence is between 80 and 90. Once you've done that and you start climbing the hill, make sure that when your cadence goes below 70 to 75 RPMs, that you adjust to a lighter gear. So in that way, you'll keep the momentum and it's much easier getting up the hill. Once again, if you're a grinder, you'll be in the lower gear ratio with a lower cadence and that will work on your legs. And if your cadence is very high, you'll use your muscles from your heart and oxygen and then you'll have a higher heart rate as well. So make sure that you practice both of these as it will depend on whether it's a long hill or whether it's a short hill. And then most of us make the mistake before reaching the top of the hill, we'll slow down or when we reach the top of the hill, we'll slow down and then we'll lose all that momentum before we go downhill. I would suggest that you pedal up the hill and then once you're over the top of the hill, give another couple of pedals before you ease back on your pedaling if you want to coast down the hill. If you stop pedaling at the top of the hill, you would lose your momentum and then you'll go slower down on the other side. Also, do not try and keep the same speed or power when going uphill as it will be different from going down the hill or going on a flat piece of road. Another bike handling skill that people might overlook is how to change your gears or how to use the brakes on your bike. Now that's different for triathlon bikes and road bikes. As road bikes have their gears and their brakes at exactly the same place, whereas when you're riding a tri bike, the gears would be on your tri bar. So you'll have to change them when you're in your tri position and then your brakes would be down on your handlebars when you're riding down in your handlebars. So once again, when you're riding uphill, you need to either be in your triathlon position or be able to lift one hand off the handlebar to change your gears to a lighter gear. So the most important thing that you can learn when cycling is how to lift one hand off the handlebar with confidence. You'll also need that when you grab some nutrition on a long bike race. So one hand needs to be free to grab the bottle of water from one of the volunteers at the aid stations and then putting it back into the bottle holders on your bike. You'll also need one hand when you open a gel or eat something as nutrition on the bike. So it's very important to know how to lift one hand off your bike. And then the last thing that you need to learn when riding your bike is how to get on and off your bike quite easily because you'll need that if you want a quick transition when you're doing a triathlon race. 
Most people will have a long ride and then after the ride, they'll be so tense that they can't get their leg over the back of the bike seat. So make sure that you also practice this. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you newbies have learned a thing or two about bike handling skills, how to take out your water bottles with confidence, as well as how to use your clip in pedals and then how to get in the aero position for a long period of time and also some general bike handling skills. If you like the content of this channel, please go and like and subscribe to my YouTube channel up here. Also go and join my Facebook and Instagram on Triathlon Tessa and go and check out the website at www.triathlontessa.com. So keep up the training and I'll see you guys soon.